Greetings friends, welcome to a shot of code. Today we're going to create a component using Stencil.js. Now this is a framework that will disappear at runtime, so we should get quite a small bundle size. Uh, so similar to um, Spelt in that respect, there's like kind of two frameworks that, that take that approach. Uh, but let's, yeah, let's jump in. I'm just going to create um, a very basic component and then see how easy it is to use. Uh, and then we'll look at the size of it as well. So. I've got a folder here. I'm just going to do an npm init um, stencil js. No, just stencil, I think. Okay, now we get three options here, and so you can create a full a full app. Uh, you can create a PWA, but we're just going to do a component. So it provides a nice starter setup for this. We don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, but let's let's call it my component. like so we'll say yes and so with that in place I can open up code here and I want it to go into that directory entry like so all right so what's it created for us we've got um, a stencil config now I'm gonna I'm gonna change this straight away so this will work for an application as well. We do not need the app, this, this part here in the application. We just create a component. Uh, I'm not gonna do the docs. So I'm just gonna strip all of that out for the moment from the stencil config. We've got a TS config, fairly straightforward there in terms of compiling uh, JSX. So yeah, stencil uses JSX in TypeScript. So our files are gonna be um, TSX files. In fact, so if we look at those now, we go into source and components here's our components here's our tsx and we can see we're decorating it with the stencil decorator so this is going to be the name of our component my component that's what we're going to put on our web page when we use it we can specify properties these will become attributes on the component we'll see that again as well so this i'm not going to change this one um, but this basic component that it gives you just outputs this text here and then it um, combines the names the first the middle and the last name so we should see that come up on the screen right um, so it's that you know in terms of creating it that's that's kind of it you know so let's do an npm install we'll get that in place and then if I just go to package.json we can see there's a few um, a few scripts given to us here so we can debug it with um, start here we can build it and it's going to create a dist folder for us with our, our runtime files we look over here there's no dist folder at the moment but if we do an npm run build we should see we've now got a dist folder and it gives us a few outputs so depending on who's going to use this you can have the correct um the correct type of code so you know whether we want es5 code or es2015 code you know it's creating both of us both of those for us in there and also a common js as well um not that we're going to use that one but yeah so you've got um you've got the ability to target older browsers such as i11 um with es5 and then you've also got your ES2015 for, for the latest uh, evergreen browsers. And we'll see that as well, because we'll, we'll import, we'll have a script tag for both of those and it will pick the right one. So we'll get it faster in the newer browsers and we'll get it working uh, in the older ones. So that's, um, that's our distribution there. Now, to use this, we would, in a real world, we'll do npm publish and, and put it up. I'm just going to run it locally. So I'm just going to do an npm link, which will mean we've got access to this now via npm on our PC here. Uh, and if I come back in here, and then let's just create a new um, new folder, and then right. So and then we'll pull this. Well, let, let's do it inside code. So we'll open up our consumer now and what do we want to do we want to do an npm init like 
like so. And then we want to pull in this new component. So let's do an npm uh, and we want to link and we want to link to my component. I just need to check that. Let's check because the name it will use is the name in our package.json here, which is my component. So that's good. We should be okay. We'll get rid of that one. Link to my component. Okay, so we can see it's pulled in node modules, and there is our file and our dist. So let's have a look at running this. Uh, let's do, let's create an index HTML. And we'll put some boilerplate in there. Now, let's pull in our web component. I'm just going to go straight to it. So into node modules, my component. We need to go into the disk folder. And then we just want to pull mycomponent.js. And with that in there, I should be able to say my component on here. And I can give it our attributes. So let's say shots of code, like so. Just get rid of that there. OK. So that, that should be good for displaying as well. Now I'm hoping I can just do open with live server and we'll get the page up. OK, so the page has come up and we're getting hello world with I'm a shot of code. So the component is, is definitely working. That looks, that looks pretty good. If I bring up the dev tools, we can see in here my component. And if I open it up, we should see that it's created shadow DOM for us. So yeah, we've got a shadow root. And in there is our content. So it's definitely a web component there. And what I was very interested in as well is the size of this. So if I go into the network and rerun this, we can see um, we can see 7.8k here. Uh, I think this is just debugging this bottom one, and then also 1.3k here. So pretty good in terms of size. I think you know maybe a third of the size of a lit element that, that's that's um, that's displayed like this. That's not not gzipped yet. Let's um, let me just go to console because, as I was mentioning, you because we've got two um, two exports created in ES5, ES6. We've got this ability now to use the correct one. So rather than just importing the script I did, I'm going to put these two scripts in, and I just replace that there and save off. So what we've got here is. A script for ES 2015 and because it's type module browsers like IE 11 wouldn't know what type module is they'd be looking for type JavaScript so they would just ignore this um, and they would run in this one here which is the ES 5 um, but newer browsers know what type module is so they would use this and they also know what no module is and they would ignore this one so that's how you get the split between being able to run our newer, more efficient, faster code and the old code for legacy browsers. So if I just save that off, we should see, we no longer get that coming up in uh, the network there. It's still working um, and our component is still loading in here. Uh, and it's just loading the, the ESM one this time. Um, so we certainly saved a little bit of size as well, I think there, a few bytes for sure. Um, so. There you go, very straightforward, very quick, very small. Um, yeah, very interesting for, for writing web components there. Um, there you go, if you like that video, give me a thumbs up. Um, just hit that subscribe if you wanna see some more. Uh, I've done a couple more web component ones, creating in Angular um, and creating in Vue. If you're interested in those, I'll put a link to those uh, at the top now. Uh, otherwise, thanks very much for watching. See you next time, bye.